So in today's video, we're going to talk about grass seed and peat moss and why you should be stocking up now for the fall overseed. So let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to talk about grass seed and peat moss. But one of the reasons why I wanted to get this video out now is that I want people to be prepared and know how much they need for the fall overseed. Um, supply right now is a little bit down in certain spots of the U.S., um, especially peat moss in my area. It goes very quickly. I'm going to touch on that in a little bit uh, later and why you should get it now as opposed to waiting to when you go do your overseed. But right now I'm going to talk about grass seed and what you should calculate for how much you need for your yard. But first, I want to talk about the grass seed itself. Um, the grass seed I used last year was GCI uh, Tall Fescue. Um, I was initially very happy with my results. As you can see here, this was last October, right around Halloween. The grass was super green, came in nice and thick, uh, didn't have any problems, it germinated very quickly. Um, but come the summertime, um, it just, for some reason, mostly in the sunny areas, uh, it just didn't do very well um, i didn't know if i maybe got a disease uh, fungus whatever um, just wasn't extremely happy with it come summertime um, so what i wanted to do was do something a little bit different this year so i went with a local uh, farm here in hamilton new jersey so i wanted to try a local farm here in hamilton new jersey and if you're not familiar hamilton it's about 30 minutes between philly and atlantic city um, it's actually known as the blueberry capital world um, more blueberries there than anywhere else in the U.S. Um, blueberry, the blueberries there are just so good. They're so fresh. Um, a lot of producers around here hold their blueberries in their stores. But there's a turf farm there called Tuckahoe a Turf Farm. Um, basically, they are a sod farm. But what's really cool about their turf farm is they supply a lot of the major uh, stadium, a lot of the professional teams in the United States, they provide their sod there. Um, so, which is really great. Um, they actually use seed from Mountain View Seed. Um, that's what this bag is here. Um, it's a blue tag certified uh, seed, which means it goes through a rigorous um, testing. Uh, they pick the seeds. They test that there's no weeds in them. There's just a lot of things that go into it to make it blue tag certified. Um, and that was one of the downfalls that I've learned with the G uh, GCI Tall Fescue. It's not blue uh, tag certified. Um, but don't get me wrong, I did have good initial results. Um, everyone could be different, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. So that's why I'm going with the Mountain View here, the Tuckahoe Turf Farm uh, seed that I got here. It's a tall fescue blend. It's a 90% tall fescue and a 10% uh, Kentucky bluegrass. So like I said, with the Mountain View grass seed blend here, it is a blue tag certified, 90% tall fescue, 10% KBG. Um, they have really great uh, varieties in the mix here. Uh, they have three different types of tall fescue and two types of KBG in it. Um, I'll leave it up on the screen here so you guys can see the mix. But what's really great about this seed is, is you can get it online. I think it's very comparable in price to the GCI Turf uh, Tall Fescue Blend. Right now their price is at 130 and the blend here, this is a 50 pound bag is 135 uh, obviously if you don't live close to hamilton you're gonna have to add in shipping but this is a 50 pound bag as opposed to the gci turf which is a 45 pound bag i think it's pretty comparable um you're getting a really great seed here it is blue tag certified and i'm not trying to knock the gci turf uh blend here but i just didn't have good results everyone could have different results um but that's me. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try something local. I mean, it is a sod farm. I got their hat on. It is game day sod. Uh, they provide sod for Heinz Field. Uh, um, they provide sod for uh, Lincoln Financial Field right here in Philadelphia for the Eagles. Um, they provide, uh, the, the Washington Nationals actually have their KBG as well, uh, their sod there. Um, so they're very well known for, in the sod industry. They use the seed right here in their sod farm. Um, and from what you can see in some of the pictures that I showed you earlier, um, it performs really well. I mean, there it's, it's in the open. It's pretty much sun um, all around. There's really not many trees. Obviously, it's a sod farm. Um, but I'm going to try this this year, and hopefully I get some good results. And now the next bag that I have over here, it's by Barenbrug. It's a perennial ryegrass. It's an RPR, um, which means that it has rhizomes. And what it means is it basically it's almost like a KPG. Uh, in itself, the perennial ryegrass will spread. 
Um, so I am going to add just a little bit of this. They sent me this uh, seed out to me. I have 50 pounds of it. So my plan is to put a little bit in this mix here in my front yard. And then in my backyard, I'll show you a picture here. Um, it's pretty much mostly crabgrass and weeds. It looks really bad. Um, I'm probably not going to kill it off or anything with vinegar like I've done with my front last year. Um, I'm just going to get my uh, Sun Joe, uh, the D Thatcher and Scarfire, and just run over that and get out as much as I can. And I'm going to throw down a bunch of this seed in the back. And whatever comes up, comes up. I usually cut it really short. Um, I don't really keep it really long in the back. Um, and obviously, perennial ryegrass likes to be very short. So I felt that this would be a great test um, to do in my backyard. And we'll see how it turns out. So the next thing before you buy any of this seed, what you want to do is calculate how much you want and how much you need. Um, so for me, uh, I'm doing just a general overseed in my yard. My yard is somewhat thick, somewhat thin. So I'm going to do in various parts of my yard between uh, five and six pounds. And in some areas, I might do a little bit more, maybe eight pounds, which is a little bit heavy, but I might bring it back down. But you need to know how to calculate this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate. So what's really great is Yard Mastery. I love Yard Mastery. I've been using their fertilizers throughout the year. They have an app. I suggest everyone go to the App Store. It's Android and Apple. You can download it on your phone. Um, they have on there a drawing. A ca uh, basically, it's like a it's like a map of your house. You put in your address, and you can trace out the different areas of your yard, so you can figure out those square footages of your yard. So I'm going to put up on the screen now my square footage of my house, and I can show you here how many zones I got. Basically. I measure everything out, the bigger areas, and then I measure out also the curb lines, meaning the uh, line between your sidewalk and your street. Um, just because you are gonna, you want to throw down seed in those areas as well, and you need to factor that into your calculations as well. So I'm going to throw it up here on the screen now. This is what it looks like in the app. It's called the Lawn Measuring Tool. Um, it's a really great tool. Um, as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different spots of my yard. I have the side yard. I have the curb line, like I said. I have the backyard. And basically, the total square footage of my house, if you include my backyard, is 6,600 square feet, um, which is a decent sized yard. Um, but from here, what you're going to do, and what I like to do, is I'm an accountant, so I do everything in Excel. Um, so I'm going to bring up my Excel sheet here, and it's very easy to do. If you don't have an Excel at home, you can write this down on a piece of paper. It's pretty simple calculations. So I'm going to throw this up here on the screen now and show you what I did to calculate everything out. So as you can see here, I have my Tuckahoe Athletic Mix here. Uh, my front of my house is 2186 square feet. And then what you want to do is you want to divide everything by 1,000 square feet to figure out how much uh, per pound you need of seed so what you do is is you take that you take that uh 21,286 and what you want to do is, is you want to divide that by a thousand and you get 2.19 then from there depending on how many pounds you're going to throw down in those certain areas so that area right now i have calculated out eight pounds uh, so you're going to take the eight pounds times the 2.19 and you get 17.49 pounds that's how much seed you're gonna put down. And then right now, I have right now, I just have that 80% there because as you can see at the bottom here, I have the Baron Brug RPR, which I might mix in at 20%. Um, you don't have to do that. If you just wanna do a regular blend of just say the Tuckahoe, you only need the 17 pounds. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do that for each of the different sections of your yard. So for instance, if you go down to where it says side yard, that's 1,717 square feet. You wanna divide that by 1,000, you get 1.72. You're gonna times that by six pounds of seed per 1,000, and you get 10 pounds, 10.30 pounds. You can round that up, round that down, however you wanna do it. But basically, if I just did the athletic mix, I would need 37.99 pounds of the athletic mix. And so basically with this 50 pound bag here, I have plenty of seed to cover that area. I always suggest you get a little bit extra um, just in case if you do have some washouts uh, from rain or things like that, you have a little bit extra seed to throw down and you can continue to grow those areas in if you have some bare spots, maybe if you missed it 
uh, with your uh, broadcast spreader. So one of the last things that I wanna show you how to do is how to calculate how much starter fertilizer you're gonna need. Um, I'm gonna get my starter fertilizer from Yard Mastery. That's where I've gotten all my fertilizers this year, but you can get it anywhere you want, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. But I've had really great results with all Yard Mastery's fertilizers, so that's what I'm gonna get. So again, I'm gonna throw up on the screen the square footage of my house and how to calculate it. So for instance, my front house, it's 2,186 square feet. You divide that by a thousand again, you get 2.19. And then Yard Mastery, all their products are three pounds per 1,000, which makes it really easy to figure out. So you take that 2.19, you times that by three, and you get 6.56 6 pounds for my front house. So in total for my whole entire house, my front, my back, my side, everywhere, I need 19.84 pounds. So I'll just round that up to say 20 pounds. Um, and their bags are 45 pounds. So I could definitely get two applications, um, which you're gonna need. You're gonna need a starter fertilizer when you put down your grass seed and then about 15 days later, after you put down that initial starter fertilizer, you wanna put down another set of, second application of your starter fertilizer. So definitely with that 45 pound bag that they sell, I will have plenty uh, for my yard for the overseed. So like I said, Go check out the Yard Mastery app. They have a lot of great things, uh, additional to the, just the lawn measuring tool in general. They have a journal in there. They give you alerts and stuff like that. Their app is really cool. Um, I've been talking to Alan about different things. Maybe they can add to the app as well. Um, but for now, go check out that app, download that app, go figure out how much grass seed you need, uh, how much starter fertilizer you need, um, especially if you're on a budget and you need to figure out how much you need for your yard. This is a great tool. I definitely ask everyone to calculate everything out um, so you can figure out exactly how much you need. So one of the last things I'm gonna talk about today is peat moss. My friend right here, um, peat moss, it's a great tool for when you go to do your overseed. Now, a lot of people out there will say that you don't really need it. Uh, you could just throw your seed down in your yard, rake it in and make sure you get that uh, seed to soil contact. But I think just putting that peat moss down gives you just that little bit of more insurance that your seed's gonna germinate. With my theory with the peat moss is it's a great insurance policy. It holds the moisture when you go to do your daily waterings for your grass seed to germinate. It holds that moisture into the ground longer. Um, it's a great organic material as well. It's OMRI listed, so it's organic. It's a great organic matter to put into your soil. Um, but what my theory behind it is if you're going to spend a lot of money on seed like i did um you know 134 dollars that's just for my yard you could be spending more than that um so why spend all that money on grass seed and not have a little bit of extra insurance and put down that peat moss as well peat moss it's very inexpensive but one of the things i suggest is you stock up now um i actually have pretty much all this the peat moss that i need for my fall overseed right now um, believe me, when it goes in Home Depot and Lowe's and they run out of stock of it, lots of times they're not going to get that stock back in. And I noticed that last year. Um, I stocked up early, uh, pretty much uh, by the end of July like I have now. Um, but when I went, I needed actually a couple more bags of it and it was really hard to find come Labor Day weekend last year. Um, so I actually had to go to a couple different Lowe's, a couple different Home Depots. They didn't have it. The only place that had it was Ace Hardware. Uh, in my town um, and I would I could tell it was sitting in the back and not many people probably know that they have peat moss um, but I luckily I got it and I was able to finish up the little bit of areas that I need with that peat moss so what I suggest you do is start stocking up now so if you live by a Home Depot or Lowe's and you're on your way from home from work and say you only have a car and SUV and you can only fit so much just grab a few, you know, as you're coming home, you know, during the week, you know, grab a few one day, then come back, grab a few and just stock up, throw it in the, your backyard. Um, this stuff's covered. I have mine sitting out in the open. So if it does get rained on, it's not going to dry out. It's not going to, you know, deteriorate these packagings that they put the peat moss in. They're really nice. They're really secure. So just grab it a little bit at a time, throw it in the back of your car. If you can't fit a bunch, like I have, a, I have a truck, so I was able to get a bunch at one time but just grab a few a little bit, but definitely I would get it, it probably in the next week or two. And just, just like I said, great insurance policy. It's great for your soil. It's great for the seed to germinate. So 
think about it and if you can budget for it like i said it's very cheap i would definitely go get it so i wanted to get this video out now to my subscribers to get a head start i want everyone to start calculating their square footage if they haven't already um, it's a great tool um, to use because you really need to know your square footage of your house so you know uh, exactly how much fertilizer that you need to put down in your areas and then when the overseed comes so you know how much grass seed that you can put down and also the, with the pounds per the grass seed um, per thousand that can vary you can go up you can go down i did six in some spots like you saw i'm mm -hmm. doing eight in, some, in certain spots as well um, but you can go up you can go down there are bag rates on a lot of the bags um, they'll tell you exactly what to put down um, but this is kind of just what i want to do this year i want to try and get this lawn nice and thick uh, again this year and i think my grass seed here with it being blue tag certified I think the grass seed is going to come in really nice. I also want to thank Barenbrook for sending me out their RPR, the perennial ryegrass to me to use this year. I can't wait to put it in my backyard and see some good results. They are a great brand. Um, they're extremely nice to talk to. They've been really uh, easy to talk to as well. They have answered all my questions. And I'm super excited about this Mountain View seed right here. It's blue tag certified, like I said. I'm going to leave links to the Baron Brock grass seed below in the video description and also the Mountain View seed here that I got at Tuckahoe Turf Farms. I want to thank Tuckahoe Turf Farms. They've answered all my questions as well. The guy's been super nice to me. Um, so I'm super happy. I'm super excited to throw down this grass seed this year. And I hope you guys at home are and I hope you learned a little bit something here today. If you found today's video helpful, make sure you smash that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm so other people can find this video. They can find my channel. And if you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content on how to prepare for the fall overseas. And I'll see you in the next one.